Good Monday evening, everybody. What a insane weekend. 20 plus hours of streaming by yours truly. We got to a wonderful goal. We are not officially done with the streamathon. We're done, but we're not. The, the basically the expectations are low, and anything further from here is additional gravy or whipped cream, your preference of food. Yes, when we come live, you'll see we've raised the number. Why not? We hit our goal. I'm already beyond appreciative of everything you guys have combined on helping us do. So begins the EMLB thank you tour. For seven straight days. <coughs> and an awful lot of coughs, apparently. <coughs> there we go. Yours truly will be front and center calling one game a day as we are going to sim seven days in or seven days of games in seven days. Getting to watch one feature game each time. <coughs> and yep, I went and spoiled myself. You'll know what I mean shortly. Tonight will be game one of seven. Well, one tonight, one tomorrow. You get the idea. We're here seven o'clock. Well, normally. Had to go a little later, sorry. Slightly longer Monday. Normally, I am up either when the rooster is Or I'm up somewhere, you know, in the six o'clock hour. And it is very rare that I wake up in the seven o'clock hour. Today, 840. Thank goodness I did not schedule an awful lot on my calendar. Day always gets busy regardless of what's on the calendar or not, but. Yeah, I, I was zonked for 20 plus hours of streaming. So now let's see how we do in short spurts. Let's go while we're young. Some of us more younger than others. Thank you, EBC. Appreciate it. You heard the man. Let's go while we're young. Let's do it. Welcome, come in. Uh, fresh victims for my ever-growing army of the undead. Sir, you have to let go of the button. Oh, son of a bitch. Good Monday evening, everybody. Good evening. Done the Alfred Hitchcock camp. I knew you knew what that was. Welcome. It is the Fluffy Kitty Ninja Show. I am that Fluffy Kitty Ninja Kamish. Everyone calls me Kamish. My friends will call me LB. My wife won't call me things before her letter words, at least for the time being, because of all the beautiful stuff that we have just gotten done. Absolutely cannot tell you how appreciative and thankful. Gratification for all that work and energy we put in. And as we said, we're not officially done. We're calling this the thank you tour. We'll talk about that in a sec, but of course, as we talk about the wife not using the four-letter words, that doesn't mean you get to, so behave as we always do. We're kind of like Blockbuster around here. We ask you to be kind and rewind. We ask you to be as nice as you can and uh, kind of heed the words of the overpaid censor that we hire around here. What's your language, you bud? We're on the air. Yeah, that guy, he, he's a little overzealous about his job, you know what I mean? Uh, let's see, you need to set up on the home, oh, you need to settle up on the home run challenge. So if you're talking about yeah, <laughs> last night, <coughs> excuse me, 
If you're talking about last night, we had 35 total home runs take place on April 8th throughout the entire league. And the challenge that we had that uh, many, uh, many people met, and thank you once again for doing that, $1 per home run hit by the entire EMLB universe during yesterday's stream. So it was $35, a nice even number for you guys. You can thank those who had double home runs uh, in particular. So, as mentioned, this is the thank you tour. Streamathon's officially over. We're put that puppy to bed for another year. Absolutely. Is there a fourth? Oh, you better believe it. We're already starting to think about it for next year. But we're still in this little thank you tour that we're doing, which means it's not done. You can still donate to the cause. You see, we kind of raised the number a little bit. We don't get there. Don't worry. I have zero expectations. You did what you needed to do. We did what we needed to do. Thanks again. That's all I can say. Anything further we do, it's going to be humbly appreciated. We've already seen a little bit come in earlier today from some people shoring things up. Pirates getting ready to do that as well. So you're going to keep seeing the alert. You're going to keep seeing that kitty ninja coming in and fighting cancer. We love it. It's a cute little emote. I think it's the most perfect emote for this channel. Um, so we're going to see how high we go. We're going to keep that open for at least one more week. So if there's anybody you know or anyone that you think would like to do even the smallest, again, remember, Dana Farmer Cancer Institute, 89 cents of every dollar that you donate is going to the life-saving care and attention that people so desperately need. You read that Daffy was caught on a camcorder cussing out a waiter at the, natural, at the 420 Natural Edibles store. Hmm. I don't think that a duck saying, You're despicable counts as a cuss just a guess anyway so here's what we're doing on the thank you tour um guess we know that the 2023 goal will at least be 15k we'll see could it be higher we'll see too early to too too early to tell we'll see we'll see how we finish here so Here's how the thank you tour is working besides the games that you will be seeing. As you see, I got a new bar here on the right, and it's simple. Every point, I'll add another dollar. We fill it, I'll throw another 250 in. Simple. Very simple. I'll happily put in a little more towards the cause. That's basically as much as I would earn from Twitch. I'll just give it right to Dana Farber. Happily done so to just put that number just a little bit better than where it is today. But again, does not matter where it goes. There we go. Pirate just added a little further. $35 from the home run challenge of yesterday. Thank you, Pirate, for settling up on that. I appreciate that. $11,361.09. And nine cents. Nine cents for Teddy Ballgame. I'm not wearing that hat tonight. I'll continue to wear my Dana Farber hats. My Jimmy Fun hat's here for the rest of this sim week. At least I can do. But um, I took a shower. I was kind of exhausted today. You're just going to have to deal with me wearing my Grogu jammies and my classic OG Star Wars graphic t-shirt. Yep. Yep. That's what you got. That's what you got. You got commission. Betty by Bota. Yes, that is. So as you see, it's already one point over. Sean Paxley, thank you, sir. I know that you had given the gift uh, out. I believe o Oasis received the gifted sub. So, uh, yep, that counts. So, we'll do the same old-fashioned subs, bits, donos. It will go towards the cause. Happy to do it. So, they uh, were already one extra dollar that I'll be adding. And again, I'm fine with wherever we land. I'm already a happy, happy boy. But like anything, we're just going to push the envelope and see how high this puppy can go. No promises on where we're going next year. Hey, we could end up lower. That's fine. It is what it is. But if we can continue to put this in the right direction, then we've got something going here. We'll see. But love what we've done already. Can't thank you enough. All right. So here's how the thank you tour is going. 
We're gonna sim one day per stream that you watch. We're gonna feature one game a day. So it's our continuance of our EMLB opening week coverage. Did I? All right, well, that's fine, I did. So uh, give, uh, give uh, Sharpie, Sharpie probably fell over in orgasm and yelled giggity, you know, from my doing that. So we'll see. <coughs> Anyone game for another home run challenge tonight? I'll leave it to you guys. I'm not going to make any challenges again. Thank you. I'm already happy with what we've been able to do, and I don't want to push the envelope any further. So anybody wants to have a little bit of an additional challenge within the community, it's appreciated. And that's the least that we can do. So again, uh, any support of the channel, we're going to redirect it to Data Farber for the rest of this week. And uh, any challenges that you guys wish to make, again, much appreciated for you to do it. So here we go. We've got Thursday, April 9th action taking place. Let's look around the EMLB universe, see what will be taking place. It's going to be a little bit of a slower window here for the next week, where normally, in a normal week, we would have had two full weeks of games get played just in three specific days. So, of course, don't get me wrong, starting next Tuesday... Or, excuse me, well, Sunday is our coffee with the commish. Monday's off. Back on Tuesday, we return to our Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday schedule beginning next week after the thank you tour. Hello, Jay Gelsinger. Welcome in. Thank you for joining the boss battle. So here is the action you will see around the league. Royals will take on the Minnesota Twins. I believe that's the start of a series for them. Or is that the conclusion of their existing series? I think that's the case. Uh, Michael Grove will be taking on Brandon Woodruff in that one. Again, pretty much every pitcher here is getting their first start of the season. It's the conclusion. Thank you, Ken. Uh, over in Oakland, the Athletics will take on the Angels' Sean Clisby. Clisby will be taking the mound. Didn't I nickname him? Shoeless Sean Clisby is what we call them. Sixto Sanchez will oppose him. That is Sixto's first start. Uh, that is in Oakland at a 3.35 afternoon start. The Jays will take on the Rays from Tropicana. Efren Contreras scheduled to be the starter. Travis McGregor is your starter for the Jays. Pittsburgh has won two against the Red Sox at Fenway. They'll try to go for the sweep here in the interleague game. Willie Whip Sentner is going on the hill for the Pirates. Pablo Lopez gets his first start for the Red Sox this year. That's a 7-30 game uh, there. By the way, we're going to have a rare Red Sox sighting as Billy has made himself available. It'll be Tigers-Red Sox on Thursday of the Thank You Tour excited that we'll get to see the Red Sox. Andrew, Andrew just wants to watch because he wants to see LeBlanc get beaten three times. He's such a bully, I tell you. My goodness. <laughs> uh, Tigers will take on the White Sox. We saw that one yesterday. White Sox winning that one 2-1. to one. Opposite field home run from Eli Lamb. Tigers will try to get their first win on the year, sending Michael Moore to the mound. Omar Fernandez, the former uh, Oriole, will oppose him for the White Sox. Mariners and the Astros will finish their series up. Mariners have taken two of three thus far. Andrew Manrique to the hill. Aaron Nola getting the start for the, uh, the Astros. It's a 9.05 start in that game. The Phillies will take on the Reds. By, by the way, I apologize. You should know this, but if not, today officially begins the clock of the new week in regards to GMs and their ability to claim as much cash as they can. There is a limit on GMs. They can claim no more than $10 million of team cash. Um, there's a point in time when team cash is going to be severely limited. I'm going to start to severely limit how much cash you can get because, again, we're not trying to take a $150 million team and by the end of the season, having them be a $300 million budget 
got to be a little bit of a challenge here for you guys but for now it's doing the job i think what's going to happen is i think there's going to be inflation on the hairballs it was a test everything is always subject to change i have a feeling inflation is going to start to take place on hairballs just my thoughts Anyway, Mariners and the Astros there. National League will have the Phillies taking on the Reds. Tyler Dyson takes the hill against Victor Munoz at the Great American Ballpark. That's an afternoon start at 12.35. Rockies and the Brewers will do battle at AmFam Clubhouse. Gabe Hillman, who is community created player of Jason Hillman, will do battle against Michael Limoncelli of the Rockies. <coughs> The Marlins will take on the Nationals. Chance Adams to the hill for the Marlins. Ty Madden for the Nationals opposing him. Braves and the Mets is our feature game. We'll come back to that one in a moment. Behind my big old head, the Giants and the Diamondbacks will finish out their series. Giants have won the first three. Wow. Taking on the Diamondbacks. Jimmy Hernandez will try to end that drought for the Diamondbacks. Uh, he was 4-1 uh, and one in 12 appearances last season. Hernandez, the now 22, 21-year-old, hasn't turned 22 yet, will oppose uh, Brad Keller, who was 12-15 and 15 last season. Giants trying to win their first four of the year. And finally, the Dodgers and the Padres from Chavez Ravine. Jacob Nix to the hill for the Padres. Luke Wander. Wow, Luke Williamson's community-created player. Gets to the majors. Calls himself the GOAT. Well, that's what he wanted to nickname himself. But Luke Wander is going to make his major league debut for the Dodgers this evening. Beer of choice tonight. I talked about spoiling. Da -da. Da -da -da -da. Sam Adams, Cherry Wheat. Forgot that one of my local supermarkets that I go to briefly, the only place that has Schofferhofer also happens to have this. Brewed with Michigan cherries, a gorgeous wheat ale. This thing goes amazing with steak on a grill, especially. No, I didn't have that tonight, but this is, outside of Oktoberfest, my favorite Sam Adams beer. And get this. That place was pimping all this Jacko pumpkin ale shit. What is up with that? Watch your language, you bud. We're on the air. Duck, we're talking beer. I will seriously pull your bill off. Not even one, not even one bottle of Oktoberfest. There's cans. What? No. <sighs> no. Nothing but this Jacko stuff all over the place. I'm like, no. You're not pumpkin spice coffee. Cut the crap. Where's the good stuff? Where's Oktoberfest? About ready to tell Sam Adams I don't want to sponsor shit because you keep pimping pumpkin beer in my ass. I sure as heck don't like it. You want shipyard pumpkin ale? You can have mine. Heading to Munich, end of September for October festing. EVC, any chance you can add a plus one? It was in Germany at uh, Epcot where I found that I really like Schofferhofer beer very much. So I did grab a pack of that. We'll have that later this week. But uh, absolutely had to get the good stuff. So, Cherry Wheat, Sam Adams, is your beer of the night. 5.3% alcohol content. And if you're from Michigan, I thank you especially because it's your Michigan cherries. Probably make this my favorite, one of my favorite beers. All right, we got the game of the night ready to go. Braves taking on the Mets. Please, you know what's going to suck on this on the whole thank you tour? We only have one game we're watching. It would suck if there's any rainouts. Thank God. <laughs> oh, that is my biggest fear on doing things the way we planned. You're going to be in Epcot this weekend. Food and, uh, food and wine tour going on out there, right?
Next year's streamathon will be commission make a wish trip to Munich. Thanks for the idea. There might, there might be now. That's gonna be the theme all week. Please, no rainouts. Alrighty, so let's uh, take some quick peeks at them, some things for notes. Oh dear God, pay attention to this. Wind is blowing in from City Field at 19 miles an hour. I don't know if you want any home run challenges, if anyone's gonna do any type of challenge for Dana Farber tonight. I don't know if I would do it based on win, based on that. Only real note we wanted to do a couple of injury notes. Aiden Pearson, we are aware, is day-to-day -day with a sore knee. He is going to play in this evening's game. Meanwhile, Troy Bacon has been sizzled. No, no, you know, no pork about that one. He's got a bit of an abdominal issue. It'll minimally affect his pitching. We're not sure if he is going to be eligible or pitching tonight or not, but we wanted to bring that to your attention, at least on the Braves' side. Uh, Aiden, uh, if you and Dan Brew can send whispers on Twitch so we can start to get the festivities underway. And you can start by telling me if you have anything that you wish to make change on. any last minute changes Troy shoulders bacon shoulder was blown to bits changes he says bacon will be available we'll see about that bacon's always available some of us are hour to hour <laughs> all right for the Mets no changes we got everything we need so of course keep in mind on that win might factor into this one but we will see as we get underway tonight's emlb game of the night <sighs> powered by an exhausting commish but i'm i'll be fine powered by out of the park baseball 23 which if for any reason you don't happen to have out of the park 23 or you need to order a copy for someone Send them here. Use the code. Use that link. Enter the code FLUFFYKITTY23 in the coupon area at the bottom right. You'll get a 10% discount on whatever Out of the Park's price currently is. And then yours truly will get a 10% discount. I get a 10% commission. You win. I win. Again, tonight, Kamish is going to be fueled, maybe by two, we'll see, of the Sam Adams Cherry Wheat from Sam Adams. That beer is especially a good decision. And, of course, you're watching us live here on the Thank You Tour edition of the Fluffy Kitty Ninjas show as we thank you for helping us work and striking out cancer in kids. Atlanta Braves are looking to win their third straight against the Mets to start this one. Let's look at their lineup leading off Alex Verdugo, the three-time AL bat or the three-time batting champ, won two with the Dodgers, won one last season with the Orioles, and gets himself traded to Atlanta. Ten-year veteran Verdugo will lead off in left field. Freddie Freeman. Has a three-game hit streak, including the last game of last season. 36-year-old from Fountain Valley, California. 
does have a home run and four RBI to start this year off. Off to a good start for the 36-year-old. 17 seasons in the majors for Freddie Freeman. Antonio Alvarez, the second-year Cuban, having a good start to this year. Had 33 home runs last season. Eh, that was good enough for third on the AL Rookie of the Year boat. Austin Riley. Riley will be at third in this one. Two for nine in the series with a homer and four runs batted in. 29-year-old is in the cleanup role. Ozzie Albies will be your second baseman batting fifth. Aiden Pearson. The 22-year-old from Sarasota, Florida, number 11 prospect in EMLB, will be behind the plate, batting sixth. <coughs> Amazingly, Verdugo is still on the Braves. Johnny Burnett is in center field. Just starting his EMLB career, one for six thus far. He was a 260 hitter with 28 round trippers last season. Ron Carney has had a great start to the year. Three for six with a homer and three RBI. Third year veteran from Brentwood, Tennessee will bat eighth in right field. Jacques Landry, the Canadian from Montreal. Traded to the Braves this season from Kansas City where he hit 242 with 67 homers, 261 RBIs. He's the recent birthday boy as he had his 28th birthday yesterday. Yesterday officially because that's when the sim day was. Connor Thomas, 27-year-old from Omega, Georgia. Left-hander, 6-9 and nine last year, 5.68 ERA. Definitely not the kind of year he wanted overall. He'll try to turn it around. To start his new season off, he'll make his first appearance of the year here at City Field. For the Mets, <coughs> excuse me, for the Mets, Freddie Zamora, the second baseman from Miami, one for five to start the season off. He's four for three for seven against Connor Thomas in his career. We'll see if that helps his cause. He will lead off at second. Brandon Nemo, the long, uh, excuse me. Hold on one sec. Denbrew, are you changing your lineup? Because I had Nimmo at second. Double checking. This is this is fine. So Nimmo's in the sixth spot. Anderson's in the two spot. Okie doke. That wasn't what you sent me in the chat. But I digress. Nothing like trying to throw the commission off because I just started talking Brandon Nemo. But we'll talk about downtown Billy Anderson, community created player of Denbrew. Three for eight with an RBI and four strikeouts to start the year off. The center fielder will bat second in front of the polar bear. <coughs> polar bear fell on me. Pete Alonzo, 31 years old from Tampa, Florida. 246 career home runs, second all time in Mets history. Just the great. Daryl Strawberry in front of him <coughs> at 252 career home runs. Alonzo, seven home runs away from becoming the all-time New York Mets home run hitter. It's good when people know the reference when I keep saying that. Pole bear fell on me. Shamara Hosky, the DH from Kansas City, Kansas. Not Missouri, there is a Kansas City, Kansas as well. Two for eight with a homer, two RBI to start his year off. Three for five against Connor Thomas as well. He will be the DH batting fourth. Jackson Miller has been looking pretty sweet. Four for seven, couple doubles, couple RBI for the second year catcher from Trinity, Florida. He'll bat fifth in this one. One of three lefties in a row. <coughs> Against Thomas. My voice is trying to fail me again already. Ridiculous. Brandon Nemo sliding down to the number six spot in this one. The right fielder from Cheyenne, Wyoming. One for seven to start the year off in right. Again, batting six. David Dahl, Birmingham, Alabama native. Tenth year in the majors. Could opt out of the deal this year. 
God, I think New York keeps doing David Dahl rain dances for that to happen. Because if not, he sticks around until 2032. Lando Arcia. Four stopped out. Doesn't work like that. Orlando Arcia, the Anico Venezuelan, will be at third base tonight. One for eight to start his season off. Joe Paulino is your shortstop from Dominican uh, from the Dominican. One for six with two strikeouts to this point. Franklin Parra, the 26-year-old from Copiag, New York. Four and five with a 4.1 ERA last year. 1.38 whip. Parra, the lefty, expected to hopefully have a solid season this year. He's been looking to try to go for a full year in the majors. He is determined to make this year the one for him. That is your matchup for your lineups in this one. Remember, you can put your bet in. Here's how the betting works. If you haven't bet yet, in the chat right down it doesn't matter how long you've been here if you can hear my voice then you can do this part <coughs> sean Paxlayer, thank you again sir another gifted sub this one landing on rockaway joe Rockaway, you have been invited to create a player in this universe so that you can have us tell your story from a virtual point of view. Players like Aiden Pearson, as well as Downtown Billy Anderson, are an example of community created players that we can tell your story ongoing in this amazing universe. Join us in the Discord, and we'll get you set up further from there. And remember, in the Discord, that's where the real EMLB universe is located. You're only getting what we show you here, which, outside of this thank you tour, is generally about 20% of the actual story. So again, in the betting process, if you're here, you can bet in the chat, write down which team you think is going to win. And put a number. How many runs will the winning team score? Keep in mind, wind is blowing in hard from center field at 19 miles an hour in this one. So don't think a lot of home runs are going out of the park. You watch, there'll be six. So again, in the chat, write down Atlanta or New York. And then a number. How many runs will the winning team score? First inning bets before the first is done. You will get 75 balls of yarn if you pick the right team at the end of it. Second inning bets will be 50 balls of yarn. Your last chance to bet in tonight's game will be before the third out of the third inning. 25 balls of yarn for you if you are right. If you are wrong at any time in the betting window, it'll cost you 25 balls of yarn. That number, though, does not hurt. It can only help. If you nail the number, regardless if you pick the right team or not, you will win balls of yarn. So even though you would lose 25 balls of yarn... For picking the wrong side if you still nail the run count though no problem you get 50 balls of yarn you will get a plus 25 still on the day that is how the whole thing works time for me to come back front and center and time for us to make the transition over to city field for tonight's first game of the emlb thank you tour Welcome, welcome, welcome. Monday night action here. Monday night baseball, EMLB. Thank you, Tour. Appreciate you all being here and appreciate all your efforts to help us strike out cancer in kids. Here is our matchup this evening. Uh, let me slide this over so you can see just a little bit better. Action between the Braves and the Mets in this regular season game. Before we get to the start of this one, let's look at the defensive alignment here for the Mets in this one. Out in left field will be David Dahl, former Gold Glove winner. Billy down, Downtown Billy Anderson is in center. Brandon Nimmo will be in right field. Orlando Arcia is your third baseman. Joe Paulino is your shortstop. Freddie Vincent Moore over at second. And the polar bear, Pete Alonso, over at first. 
Jackson Miller is behind the plate. I think you can see his rating. It's 15. One five, if you can't see it. But 15 on a scale of 1 to 20, if you're also wondering that. On the hill, uh, catch, uh, Miller is catching four. It's going to be Franklin Para. Excuse me. Para, the 26-year-old from Copiog, New York. It's his third season in the majors for the left-hander. He was uh, four and five last year with a 4.10 ERA over 68 innings of work. Gave up 66 hits, 31 earned runs, 10 were by way of homer. He walked 28, struck out 47. He also pitched in Syracuse where he had a 7-5 record and a 3.44 ERA. Former 11th round draft pick Para back in 2018 out of Copiag High School. There is, uh, well, actually, let's quickly say he throws low mid 90s with the fastball. He's your traditional four pitch pitcher, fastball, slider, curveball, and the changeup. He's ready to go. That'll get our game of the night underway. Alex Verdugo, the three time batting champion, reigning American League batting champion, won't be able to defend it because he's in the National League, y'all. Well, that's right. Aiden has him, so he'll be traded probably in three weeks. Hi, Aiden. Just kidding. Running joke. Game of the night underway. Alex Verdugo comes to the box. Two for ten to start his year. Verdugo last season. AL batting title with the Baltimore Orioles. 365 average. 23 home runs and 77 RBI. If you've never been here before, here's what you're watching. You're watching an online league and a fully managed game. Uh, it, the Atlanta Braves are being managed by Rays Rules 9107. That's Aiden Pearson in the chat for the Mets. That is Jacob Schmidt. That is Den Brew. They are your combatants. They will be writing in whispers, so I'll be looking right to see what they are asking me to do. I literally just press buttons. I literally tell stories. I don't manage a team, or I don't want to. One team is being pseudo-managed just for the moment, but I have GMs in place. They have community created players, virtual players here watching us and cheering on their favorite teams. We're ready to go. Let's get this one started. When no one's on base, we go right to the result. When runners are aboard, we will go pitch by pitch and we'll tell the story more. The managers can manage more. We're ready to go. EMLB Thank You Tour officially started. Cherry wait in hand. Cheers, guys. Let's get us going. 1-0 pitch coming from power to Verdugo. Going to be well struck in the air right field. Wind is definitely pulling up, going up, making the catch at the warning track is Brandon Nemo. I think that one had every sign of being out of here and maybe even a double decker. 19 mile an hour wind says no thank you. The trajectory of the ball was too high. This is one time that it actually is right. One out. Thought it was gone. Well, it looked it. It absolutely did, but the wind made a huge difference there. One out now. Freddie Freeman is your batter. Freeman, the 36 year old from Fountain Valley, California. Three for nine to start his year off. A home run, four RBIs, three game hitting streak carrying over from last year as well. Freeman very possibly could get his 400th home run of his career this year. That would all be with the Braves. <coughs> Sorry, I wanted to check something. I meant to look at that earlier. Uh, yep, Freeman at 383. Uh, he ain't going to catch Hank Aaron, but uh, Chipper Jones is next in his sights, but still quite a ways. 468. Freeman is fourth all time on the Braves. Line shot at second, but Zamora was well positioned in the shift, and he will pull it in for the second out. Couple hard hit balls coming from the Braves, but nothing doing here to start us off. And with two outs now, let's put uh, Antonio Alvarez into the box. Alvarez from Cuba. 
great first season, 299 average, 33 homers, and 87 RBI. He's already duplicating it, 4 for 9 to start his year off. The 0-2. Slapped into right center field. That one's going to get down and be trouble. Alvarez taking a hard corner. He will head for second, and he starts to slow it down and pulls in for a two-out double. <coughs> Alvarez's second double on the season. He had 24 last year. No, uh... <coughs> Excuse me. No one, two, three for Prower here to start us off. We'll have Alvarez at second. Austin Riley will come to the dish. Riley, 222 average with a home run and four RBI this year. The, uh, the re rated this morning, Austin Riley. First pitch, he goes right after it. He will foul it out of play. Right behind the uh, uh, by behind home plate. Yeah, sorry about. It. Just for clarification, did we officially have any challenge? Again, if you don't, no pressure. Just wanting to make sure I'm keeping track of that. Oh, one from Para comes inside. Too far in. One ball, one strike. The 1-1. One, one. Big swing right at the curveball. Looked a little baffled on the pitch. It came up and in. One ball, two strikes. Eyes might have lit up on that hanging curveball, but Riley could not connect. It's one ball, two strikes. Uh, again, on the bar that you see above uh, the widgets, the thank you tour goal. You're doing the home run challenge around the league for today. Thank you, JR. I suppose. Appreciate that. One dollar per homer around the league. We'll look at the out-of-town scoreboard shortly. <coughs> Not expecting home runs here in City. The one-two pitch. Misses low and away. Two balls and two strikes. Hey, Rob. 2-2 two, two pitch coming to Riley. That one's going to miss away. It's ball three for full, first full count pitch on the evening. Riley was drafted first. Well, in the first round, but it was the 41st overall pick. A lot of compensation picks in 2015. He was out of DeSoto Central High School in South Haven, Mississippi. The 3-2 pitch to Riley. He will miss just outside ball four. Para shaking his head a bit. He thought that one was close. Eh, close enough, but it's ball four. Nonetheless, Riley is aboard. Two on with two outs now. Ozzy Albies, the switch hitting second baseman, will get his chance. The smaller second baseman from Curacao so far this year. Three for eight with an RBI. Hit just a very light 211 last year. First pitch goes after the curveball, fouls it straight back. No balls and one strike. Albies now in his 10th season in the majors. Love it. Cito loves using that emote when he wins the balls of yarn. That was kind of the intent of putting it up. At some point in time, Rocky Draws might make a samurai dog emote. But not yet. The 0-1. Swings and fouls that one off. He'll be quickly behind. No balls and two strikes.
the 0-2 pitch goes low does not go after it one ball two strikes there's the other cool emote to use when you're winning balls of yarn the original kitty yarn emote before my daughter had to create that work of art for her college program One ball, two strikes coming to Albies, who's got a small sample against Paro, two for five in his career with a home run. The one, two. Swings and bounces that one back. It's going to be out of play. Count remains one and two. <coughs> the one, two pitch. Misses low, two balls and two strikes. In lieu of dogs, there's always, yes, the rage, the shake rage emote for losses. Because nothing like a cat that just sees fire in his eyes. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Missing low and inside. Three balls, two strikes. Everybody is going to be off on the pitch. Antonio Alvarez is at second. Austin Riley at first here. We're just underway at City Field with two outs. Three, two pitch. Runners go. It's going to be swung on and lifted in the air. Very high. Coming under it is Orlando Arcia. He will make the catch about three feet from the back. And he will retire this side. Juan Peter, I believe. Hopefully I said it right. Thank you for hitting the follow button. Welcome to the coughing commish and the fluffy kitty ninja show for those who don't know six weeks with covid cough won't go away that and 22 hour streamathons on the weekends as well too half an inning in the books braves will leave a couple we'll go to the bottom of the first mets coming up I'd scout the Atlanta players, but they probably will all be traded by the end of the season. Well, you can always keep an eye on Jacques Landry and call him the son of Montreal. Ha 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 ha! Et He loves to yell that when he hits a homer. So. Anyway. Connor Thomas taking the hill for the Braves. Before we talk about him, let's look at your defensive alignment for the Braves in this one. <coughs> Excuse me. Alex Verdergo is in left field. Johnny Burnett's the rookie in center. And Ron Carney, the offensive dynamo in right field. Austin Riley is your third baseman. Jacques Landry is over at short. Ozzy Albies is your second baseman. And Freddie Freeman over at first. Aiden Pearson is behind the dish. I think you can see his catcher arm rating of 17. That's 1-7. Again, on a rating scale of 1-20 to 20 in EMLB. That's right. Get your bets in before the inning ends so you can get the maximum balls of yarn opportunity. Again, all you got to do to bet in chat. If you can hear my voice, you're eligible. Just write which team you think wins. The Braves or the Mets. But include a run count. Wind is blowing in at 19 miles an hour. Might want to factor that in on your offensive thoughts. Pearson behind the plate on the hill. The 27-year-old from Omega, Georgia. It's Connor Thomas. Thomas, fifth year in the majors for him. Last year was his probably worst one. He was 6-9 with a 5.68 ERA in 32 appearances. Still got 177 innings of work log, but he gave up 230 hits. Youch. <laughs> That led to 112 runs, 25 homers. He did walk just 37, so he's got that going for him. He struck out 148. Thomas throws the low 90s fastball, has a pretty sharp curveball, works best on runner uh, batters, um, uh, lefties especially, and also has a changeup as well. Thomas is ready to go. Let's get our first Met in there for today's game. It's Freddy Zamora. Zamora from Miami, Florida, 27 year old. One for five so far this season for Zamora. Zamora starting his sixth year in the majors. He's been with Houston, Miami, and the Mets. <coughs> Sup, Triangle? Oops, I got the pitch by pitch on. My bad. 
2-1 pitch to Zamora. He's going to lift it to left field. Verdugo trying to gauge this one in the wind. Feels like he's got a measure on it. And it makes the catch for the out. All of the outfielders were seen prior to this game spending considerable time fielding outfield fly balls to try to factor wind into this. We will see if that is going to wreak havoc on anybody at all. But there is a first out. One out now, downtown Billy Anderson, 22-year-old community-created player of Denbrew. The Orlando, Florida native checks in three for eight so far this year with an RBI. O2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He will swing over the fastball and go down. <coughs> <coughs> if I keep having this cough, I'm gonna feel like Pac-Man is my only <laughs> only uh saving grace here. First strikeout on the day for Connor Thomas. That will do away with Anderson. We got two outs now, bottom of the first. The polar bear, Pete Alonzo. Alonzo, the Floridian, now 31 year old. Two for seven to start our year off, has a solo home run. 246 career home runs now for the Polar Bear. Again, second all-time in Mets history, just behind Daryl Strawberry, who had 252. Against Thomas, he's got good success, seven for 19, including a couple homers. The one-two. Up and in the zone, and he blows it by him. It's only 90, but it was enough to do the job there. Fatality. Second strikeout on the day for Connor Thomas. Side is retire. Let's go to the second inning. No score here from City Field. It's the EMLB Thank You Tour. One inning in the books. No score. Excuse me one sec. I'm just going to adjust my camera. I feel like I'm low. As I told you, I've got my OG Star Wars graphic t-shirt going today. You got kind of bedtime commish. And no, I'm not showing you my Grogu jammies. Top of the second, we go. Franklin Power back to the hill for his second inning of work. We got Aiden Pearson. Johnny Burnett's and Ron Carney scheduled up in this inning. We'll start with Pearson. Pearson, the 22-year-old from Sarasota, Florida, checks in two for seven to start the year off. He had a brief cup of coffee last year, 96 at bats. He hit 208 with a couple homers. First pitch, Pearson sees, goes against the shift, diving attempt from Alonzo, it gets by and it's going to bounce around in the corner. Nemo goes and chases after it against the shift, Pearson's going to get in there with a double. Pretty savvy first pitch from Aiden, uh, uh, from Parra as he stays away, but Pearson slaps it right side, past the diving polar bear, Nemo had to run for days as he was in the shift. Leaving a lot of real estate out there. Pearson getting to second with the leadoff double. Coffee, uh, comfy commish is a good commish. A coffee with the commish is even better. But tonight, it be be a, it be be a. All right, hey, Johnny Burnett's. The 24-year-old from De, De Pere, Wisconsin. Third career EMLB game. He comes in one for six. Former 20, uh, third round draft pick in 2022. Was drafted uh, out of Staunton River College in Moneta, Virginia. First pitch, actually Para with a little dipsy do back on a pickoff attempt to uh, on Pearson, but he gets back in. <coughs> First.
first pitch comes in. It's a curveball that will miss the strike zone on the inner half. No ball, a uh, one ball, no strikes. Burnett's last season with Gwinnett hit 260 with 28 home runs and 79 runs batted in. The 1 0. Stays inside. This is too far in. Ball two. Burnett's given the opportunity. Braves decided to move on from Christian Pash, who got traded to Kansas City. Yeah, Kansas City. 99% sure that's right. Always that shred of doubt with as many ball players are in our EMLB universe. The 2 0. Oh. Takes it. Well, he started to swing. It doesn't matter. It was in there for a strike at the knees. The 2 1 pitch. That's going to miss a wave. All three. Three balls and one strike. <coughs> Ron Carney is waiting on deck. The 3 1 goes and swings at that one, fouls it back. He was early on that pitch. He was very charged to go yard on that one. Full cap pitch, third one so far this game already for Para. The 3 2. Swing and a miss. Stays with the fastball low. He will fool him completely. First strikeout on the day for Para. Let's get Fluffy. I always like jumping in for Fluffy battles. Let's get Fluffy. That just sounds like, you know, something that we would do around here. Let's get busy. No, let's get Fluffy. Okay, sounded good to me. Ron Carney to the box. Carney, the 26-year-old from Brentwood, Tennessee. Three for six so far this year with a home run and three runs batted in. Carney is very much an all-or-nothing kind of guy. He can either swing for the fences, he can dazzle you with his speed, or he can dazzle you with his fielding, but it is an all-or-nothing prospect. Come on, let's get it. There we go. First pitch will be away for ball one. Carney was a fifth round draft pick out of, out of Dallas Baptist College in Texas. Originally signed with the St. Louis Cardinals, traded to the Braves along with Kellum Clark in exchange for Ronald Acuna Jr. The 1 0. In there. One ball, one strike. I'd say Acuna has done quite well in this deal. Cool commish with my Thug Life glasses behind. Great, Tranquil. As soon as you did that, that's exactly what I had was the Will Smith song in my head. Na 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 na. He'll come out with a new version called Getting Slappy With It. Na, 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 na. Come on, Kazar. The 1 1. Goes after the pitch. They appeal. No, they really say it wasn't much of a swing there. So nonchalant over at third. Two balls, one strike. Two, one delivery is grounded to short. Ranging to his left is Paulino. He will throw to first in time for the out. Which deal? JR, which deal are you referring to? <laughs> J 
Getting tortilla slapped with it. Yeah, that did not feel good. Oh, the three-way. Okay, yes. Yes, that's right. That's right. That was the... that. That's right. One more for a full wow tie for the fun. Tie for the fun, huh? What are we, Beanie Babies around here? No, I get what you mean. Th Sadia, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, now that's $3 additional that I will be donating uh, to Dana Farber at the end of this week. Again, for the rest of this week as part of our thank you goal. We kept it simple. $1 for every point you push here and support the channel. And if we get all the way to goal again... I'll make it $250. Time for, with two outs, Jacques Landry. Le standard d'excellence. The recent birthday boy turned 28 years old yesterday. He is one for seven to start off his brave career with two RBI. Boom! <laughs> JR says, Jedi Cats, all about. And I uh, see what's funny is, is that Pete Grassy came in here and dropped 34 gifted subs yesterday so that I was on the hook for $1,000. And he didn't even sub himself. But JR just took care of it and gave him a gifted sub. So, JR, thank you very much. We're already up to $8 here today. Appreciate all of the kindness as always. Alrighty. So, uh, Jacques Landry, again, one for seven, two RBI for Le Standard d'Excellence. First pitch to Landry will find it at the knee. Strike one as he watched the slider coming inside. Landry was drafted 13th overall back in 2022 by the Kansas City Royals. He was from the, no, no, that's the Ohio State University, but he was drafted in Miami. He'd be a hurricane. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know if that will sell, Tranquil, unless those things become as uh, exciting as crypto once again. But I uh, tell people I'm still on the fence on crypto. I can't have that conversation with you live here because that would be getting me in trouble. Except to tell you that there's two ways I could look at it. It could either be a hell of an investment or it could be a digital beanie baby. Not the only way I can put it. Harris Bueller will be happy the cage is getting some boost. I'm sure he will. Now the question is, will Jordan Cage do an extension in Toronto? Hmm. We'll see. 0-1 pitch, curveball missing high. It is one ball, one strike. I tell you, for a playlist that says it has 345 songs and 12 hours of music. I swear, I feel like every second or third stream, this song gets pulled up with a half minute of dead air, and I need to just fast forward from it. Well, he says Toronto is the cleanest city in the world, so hmm. that sounds like a yes. The 1-1. One, one. Missing low, two balls, one strike. I love JR's attitude about it. Most guys want their own CCP and won't invest in him. JR is like, eh, I don't care. I really want to see where he goes and that I don't have to worry about him myself. The 2-1 to Landry. Goes after it. Well struck into left center field, but you know the wind is going to knock that one down. It sure did. Anderson will get there in time. That one definitely had a good charge on it. <coughs> Don't know if it had home run distance, but it absolutely died on the vine. 18, 19 mile an hour wind blowing in from center in this one. Side is retired. 
two uh, inning and a half are in the books. Here we'll go to the bottom of the second now. No score from City Field. You've already decided you will not draft your CP CPs coming in the next draft. Now, see? That is appreciated. Again, I get everyone's approach on it, but it's just a little extra tip of the cap when you're willing to still invest in your player, regardless if they influence you or not. Of course, you'll hate it if they ever win a game-winning home run in the seventh inning of a World Series, but how often is that going to happen? Probably not. Probably never. Just saying. All right, bottom of the second we go. Connor Thomas had a good first inning. We'll go back to the bottom of the second. Shamar Hosky, Jackson Miller, Brandon Nimmo will be the batters. We'll start it off with Hosky. Two for eight for Hosky with a homer. Two runs batted in for the former first round draft pick in 2022. Or if he's drafted by the Cards or Cups, then JR will be like, Bleh. That's a loyal Reds man right there. First pitch to Thomas. Line shot in the center field. That'll be a base hit. Hosky apparently seen the win, and he just decides, I'm going to go against the win. Keeper low. Let's see where we go, and he'll get a base hit. First hit on the day for the Mets. It'll lead off the second. <coughs> Jackson Miller, the catcher. 24-year-old from Trinity, Florida. Four for seven already this season for Jackson. Couple doubles, couple RBI. First pitch. Misses up and away. One ball, no strikes. Hey, sports fan, welcome to the channel. You are very welcome, courtesy of a longtime friend, Jordan Cage. CCP is what we offer you when you get a gifted sub. We are invited to create a player in this universe. That means we would love you to join our Discord for the EMLB, full EMLB experience. Your player. We can tell your story, starting with this draft coming this July. One of 30 GMs will draft you, and we will tell your story. You can live the life as a player here in the EMLB universe. Be like Aiden Pearson, the catcher here. Be like downtown Billy Anderson, the center fielder for the Mets. Let us create, help you create your player and tell your story. 1-0 pitch to Miller comes from Thomas. This one is going to miss low. It's ball two. Thomas was a fourth overall selection back in 2020 in the first round by the Chicago White Sox out of Mitchell High School. It was part of several trades. First, he found his way to the Astros along with Diego Cartaya in exchange for Francis Martez and Carlos Radon. And the Astros traded him along with J.B. Bukaskas, Blake Trinan, Sergio Fajardo, and Freddy Zamora, who you know now, in exchange for Joander Suarez, Ronnie Mauricio, Galbert Seri, and some guy called Syndergaard. Those four are in the majors. The 2-0. Oh, misses. Nope, that one's in at the knees. Couldn't tell. Was questioning that. Two balls, one strikes. <laughs> now everyone's going to have to try to block Anju from trying to draft JR's player here. <laughs> Two, one delivery. This one's up in and hit foul as he goes after the changeup coming in hard on him. It was in the zone, expected to be a strike. Still, two balls, two strikes, no outs. Shamar Hosky over at first. Hosky, not a stolen base threat. The two, two. Misses low, goes with the curveball. Can't get Miller to go after its full count pitch.
the three to pitch. Grounded to third, over to second for one, over to first in time. It's a 5-4-3 double play. Yeah, baby! Yeah. Austin Riley easily over to Albies. Albies, no worries of Hosky, who wasn't fast over to second. We'll get it to first. We've got a 5-4-3 double play. Two outs here, bottom of the first. We'll go to the number six hitter, Brandon Nimmo. Nimmo, the Cheyenne, Wyoming native, now 33 years old. One for seven to start the year for Nimmo. Nimmo now 11 years in the majors, all with the Mets. First pitch from Thomas. Slaps it the other way. That'll get by for a base hit. Just over the uh, efforts of Riley. He'll take a wide turn and go back to first. Wasn't going to chance the arm of Alex Verdugo. Second hit on the day now for the Mets. Nimmo over at first. David Dahl will be the batter. Dahl now 32 years old. One for five this season. One for 10 in his career against Connor Thomas. Needs to raise that trade value, he says. First pitch to Dahl is a strike on the outside corner. Pretty nasty pitch from Thomas. Oh, one goes after that one. Blocked. It's a swing. Apparently, it didn't stay in Pearson's glove. He blocked it. It might have been a pitch in the dirt. Let's see. No, well, no, it's a changeup. He just had a bit of a miscue with it. Nimmo doesn't go anywhere. It's a no ball, two strike count. Reminder, we are simming seven straight days. Part of this thank you tour. Tomorrow's game is the Angels taking on the Seattle Mariners at 7 o'clock. The 0-2, no quick snap throw over to first at Nimmo, but he will get back in there. Nimmo, not a big stolen base guy. 28 stolen bases in his career. Did I hit a homer? Just for a guy that I wasn't thinking was going to get hit 10 home runs a year, he sure hits a lot. The 0-2. Checks the swing. No worries. He went down and he is out. Third strike out on the day for Connor. Thomas will retire the side here to end the second. Mets will leave a runner aboard. They got a hit, but that's all. Well, they got two hits, but that's all they will get. We are going to go to the top of the third. It's now the third inning, which means this is your last chance to get bets in for this game. After the third, we will check the out-of-town score. So again, third inning, last bets in, last call for bets, we should say, as we start the inning off. We have Alex Verdugo, Freddie Freeman, Tony Alvarez, top of the order for the Braves due up. That would be an expensive bill to release him mid-game. Or to release him at any point here. Who gave him nine years and $243 million? Not me. Three, two, pitch. Grounded is second. Zamora, range to his right, over to first for the out. I see you've been thinking about it. I hope your wife will be okay, Mike. Thank you very much for, again, the two gifted subs tonight. All the best, and as always, if there's anything you need, please let me know. 
one out. Drop of the third, Freddie Freeman, your battery 0 for 1 today. one -oh to Freddie. Hard hit to left field. This one's going to test the win, but it looks like it's way gone. Yeah, it still gets out there. It's a home run, Freddie Freeman. <laughs> Apple Taco, says Freddie Freeman. In against the wind as well, too. How far would that have gone without the wind? Man, he tagged that one. Home run, Freddie Freeman is second on the season. It's 1-0. Freddie Cool, indeed. 384 home runs now in the career of Freeman. Still with one out. Antonio Alvarez is your batter. He had a base hit in his first at bat. First pitch, he sees the grounder to third. Good running over by Arcia to his left. Barehanded, he makes the throw over to first. Nice glove work there from Arcia for the second out. I don't trade franchise cornerstones that have a no trade clause because, well, I can't. <laughs> Two outs now. Austin Riley to the dish. Riley took a walk in his first appearance. And the Freeman home run, of course, is another dollar tonight for anyone who chose to do the home run challenge that JR has said he's willing to do. Again, I'm now on the hook to add eight more dollars to Dana Farber. If my bar goes full before the week is done, then it will be $250 total that I will match. O2 pitch to Riley. Call strike three with the curveball. Don't think he liked the call very much, but it don't matter. Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. No kaboom from Austin Riley, but Freddie Freeman did the job against the 19-mile-an-hour win. He gets it into left field for the home run. Bottom of the third we go. Last chance for you to bet now. It's Braves one. That's nothing. Bottom of the third, we go. 891 hitters do up for the Mets. We'll start it off with Orlando Arcia. Arcia from Anaco, Venezuela. One for eight with three strikeouts in his career. Uh, in his career today. Uh, today, this season. Come on, Kamish. You're going to have to sweet talk your bank account after Dana Farber and our show this weekend. Yes, you will. But again, your kindness is very much appreciated, JR. Thank you, thank you. You like that Asian style track from Harris Heller. Most of his most of his work has that style. He has a lot of that style. It's a it's a lot of his background. Garcia, 31 year old, 11th year in the majors. First pitch he sees, he lifted into right field, pulling in plenty of room. Ron Garney will make the catch. One out. One out now, Joseph Paulino, the shortstop, to the plate. Paulino with the Twins last season. 24-year-old from Santa Domingo. At least you had around 250 people turn out Saturday night. was a relief. Glad to hear that. Sounds like a good turnout for uh, an indie show. Awesome. When we've done or had indie shows at like local festivals, yeah, you'd have people all over the place, but maybe only 20 or 30 were really there to watch it. The one that had a lot of people watching was years ago, and it had very much past his prime, very much past his WWE days, but the guy who was Axe from Demolition, and that's what he called himself, Axe Demolition. 
and he still used his original, you know, his original music he used to come out in. One one pitch, grounded to short. Uh, Jack Landry is there. Got to get used to saying Landry is a shortstop. He'll fire it over to Freeman in time for the second out. Two outs now. Freddie Zamora back to the dish. Show for one. They were, they were. The one one. Hard shot to short. Landry's deep in the hole. Couple steps into the outfield. Hard throw to first in time. Who said Jack Landry doesn't have short stop potential? He looked pretty good there. Might not be the most athletic guy, but it gets the job done. One, two, three, inning for the Mets. Three innings are in the books. No more bets. Your bets are in. Good luck to you. Three innings done. It's one nothing Atlanta. Let's uh, quickly transition over and look at the EMLB out of town scoreboard and see what's happening with your favorite team around the league. Starting with Tampa taking on Toronto. They're off to a 2-1 lead. Uh, that's Damon Lyle. Dalen Lyle getting a home run for the Jays so far. That's in the top of the fourth. Bottom of the eighth at Washington. Nationals are off to a 4-1 lead. Josh Kath got his second homer for the Marlins. Juan Soto and uh, Hunter Bishop with their first in the 2026 year. 2-1, bottom of the second as the Red Sox try to avoid the sweep. Danny Diaz gets his fourth. Some punk got his first. Yeah, big deal. All right, uh, let's see. Finals, Milwaukee will defeat the Rockies 6-5. to five. Several home runs in that one. Colin, uh, Colton Welker, uh, Seiya Suzuki gets his first. Grant Levine is first. And two home runs from Phil Aiken for the Brew Crew. They will win 6-5. to uh, The Angels will be 2-0 winners against the Athletics. Josh Jung and Mike Trout, the reason for that, and it's solo home runs for themselves. Cincinnati will defeat the Phillies by a 7-3 score. Alan Brokale will contribute his first career EMLB homer. 99% sure it is. Yes, it is. Jake Lamb and Ian Groot gets his first home run. Three homers in that game. Then in uh, Minnesota, the Royals and the Twins. Twins win 4-3 at Letarge. Trevor Larnick getting a home run. Jeff Piazza, Rule 5 draft pick, gets his second. Jose Ramirez got his first. Other games to be played later. San Fran taking on Arizona. Detroit having the White Sox. Dodgers hosting the Padres. And Houston juicing the Mariners. Juicing. Minute Maid Park. Get it? Ha! Anyway. Top of the fourth. 19 home runs already. Very cool. All right. Para ready to go. He's got Albies, Pearson, Burnett, Stu up in the inning. We'll start with Albies 0 for 1. First pitch, going to swing and lifts that on the infield left side. Arcia around with both Para and Paulino near him, pulls it in, makes the catch. One out. One out now. Aiden Pearson is your batter. Pearson slapped one opposite way for a double. It's one for one. And shift is on against Pearson. The 1-1 pitch. Goes towards left center field. Wind again might be a big distance difference in this one. Anderson thinks he has it sized up. He will pull it in for the second out. Definitely looked good coming off the bat. But again, so much wind coming in from center field. That killing. A lot of baseballs here. Two outs now. Johnny Burnitz will be your batter. Burnett's is 0 for 1. The 
one ball, two strike pitch. To center field. Again, Anderson making a few moves, dancing around, thinks he's got it, does, makes the catch, side is retired. There's the one, two, three inning for Franklin Parra as the side goes down. Three and a half in the books. Bottom of the fourth coming up. And it's one nothing. I will take a quick break after this half inning. It will be quick. Mostly bathroom run and checking to see if the kiddos are starting to go down. Connor Thomas. Fourth inning of work for him. Three good first ones to start her off here. He's got the two, three, four hitters. Do up. Billy Anderson, Pete Alonzo, Shamar Hosky. Anderson is 0 for 1. The 1 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Throws the curveball. He cannot come around on it. That's four strikeouts on the day now for Connor Thomas. One out here, bottom of the fourth. Pete Alonzo to the box. The polar bear, 0 for 1. He struck out in his first appearance. 23 bets for the night. Mets ahead, 13 to 10. Yes, don't forget, we're back here tomorrow. Got the Angels taking on the Mariner Mafia. Should be an interesting one. 7 o'clock start, Eastern time. A 1-2 pitch. To left center field, pretty well struck. Again, wind looks like it's pulling it up. Everybody out there is trying to adjust. Bernitz will come and make the catch. Didn't look the most comfortable, but it's in the glove. Two outs. Shamar Hosky, your batter. Hosky, one for one. He had a single. Two two pitch. To left field. This one's curling towards left center. It gets down. He got a base hit. Hosky's thinking too. Not the fastest guy. Verdugo has it. Throws into first. Not a second. Not in time. He will get in there with a two bagger. Shamar Hosky got 30 doubles last year. There's his first of the new season. And we got a two out base runner in scoring position. Third hit on the day now for the Mets. Jackson Miller comes into the box. 0 for 1 today. First pitch, no quick snap throw. Wow, trying to see if Hosky's asleep. He gets back in time. Hosky definitely considered to be a statue on the base paths. I did, in regards to your messaging. First pitch is at the letters. I could. Excuse me. Hang it. The 0 1. Center field pretty well struck. Going back. Still going back to the warning track. And Johnny Burnett makes the catch. That one probably was gone in most other nights. But tonight, it's just an extremely loud out. 19 miles an hour in from center field. We are seeing the effects. Side is retired. Four innings in the books. Time for us to take our one plan to break this evening. When we come back, well, we already checked the out-of-town scoreboard. So when we come back, we will continue this game from City Field in New York with the journey of the starters coming up. MLB. Thank you, Tor. We'll be right back. Coming back live, it is Monday. Thank you, tour of the Fluffy Kitty Ninjas show. Again, seven straight days of streaming as we say thank you to all of you for helping us achieve our primary goal, $10,000 to Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Of course, we are keeping this open for the seven-day tour. 
Don't really expect too much, but again, the kindness of what you guys do on anything further towards Dana Farber, greatly appreciated. There's the link again. We are at $11,361 thus far. Again, we made our goal. Can't thank you enough. We'll see how high we can go. I know there's one open challenge for $1 per total home run hit in the entire EMLB here on this April 9th that we are at. Aiden is almost back, so I gave him a little extra time. Don't think he'll miss too, too much if we do a batter or two here. Ron Carney, Jacques Landry, and Alex Verdugo will be the batters to start us off. It is the fourth inning, so that means Journey of the Starters brought to you by Kamish's Brew of Choice. Tonight, it was Starbu uh, Starbucks. Yeah, Starbucks makes beer now, yo. No. It was Sam Adams doing cherry wheat. I spoiled myself tonight. One of my favorite beers for all the good hard work that we did. So cherry wheat, those Michigan cherries and a nice wheat ale. It's a great mix. Fabulous. Highly recommend it. Having it with your favorite steak. You will not be disappointed. Sam Adams, always a good decision. Franklin Parra, four innings of work, three hits, one run. That was the, the Freddie Freeman opposite field home run that he allowed. He walked one and struck out two. Not a bad first appearance for Parra this year. 55 pitches so far through his first four innings. Ron Carney into the box to get this fifth inning underway. Carney is 0 for 1. Cool. Yep. And uh, as a reminder, we love it if you guys are active on clips we're going to start populating our clips down to an emlb highlights in the discord you meant the oppo taco huh um we're gonna have those start to populate in an emlb highlight section in the discord but for the time being if you want to carry those clips over down to the discord for people who are not here they can catch up on it later and see what they have missed all right aiden's here I talked long enough. It's a one-two pitch. Great. Thank you, guys. Hard shot to short. Over there is Joe Paulino. He'll throw to first to retire Carney for the first out. One out now, number nine hitter Jacques Landry comes to the box. He's 0 for 1. Two-two pitch. Got him swinging. Sends the off-speed off pitch in. Fools him completely. Emotional damage. Third strikeout on the day for Franklin Parra. We got two outs now. Top of the fifth. Top of the order. The three-time batting champion Alex Verdugo is up. He's 0 for 2 today. The 2-1 pitch. To the air right field. Brandon Nimmo has it sized up. He'll make the catch in shallow right. One, two, three inning for Franklin Parra here in the top of the fifth. Side is retired halfway through this ball game. It is official. Windy, but official. Two to one, uh, one nothing. Bottom of the fifth coming up. Bottom of the fifth, one more time, the journey of the starters brought to you tonight by Kamish's Beer of Choice. It is Sam Adams, Jerry Week. Connor Thomas has four innings of work, three hits, no runs, no walks allowed either. He struck out four, been fairly efficient on his pitches, 46 pitches through this outing. We would be honored if you would join us. JJ, thank you very much for hitting the follow button. We welcome you to Fluffy Kitty Ninjas, the home of the EMLB universe. Brandon Nemo is your batter. Brandon is one for one today. Two-two pitch. Got him looking on the curveball on the inner half. Nothing but crickets out there. He didn't take the bat off the shoulder. Fifth strikeout on the day for Connor Thomas. Gets us our first out of the bottom of the fifth. In steps the Mets GM coveted favorite batter of his career, David Dahl. He's 0 for 1.
First pitch, Dahl sees hard shot to right field, but boy, that is right in the direction of Ron Carney, and he will make the catch for the second out. He's good with most of his tracks. That's why it's played predominantly in the background here. Save for uh, the Olivia Newton-John music that I played in between games one and two yesterday, because again, uh, ONJ lost her battle to cancer after a 30-year fight with cancer, and she passed away here just before our streamathon. So one of my donations was specifically in her honor. Other than that, we play Harris Heller right here. Orlando R.C. of the number eight hitter will be your batter. He's 0 for 1. First pitch, hard grounder over to Landry. Pretty easy play for him. He will throw out his fellow shortstop to retire the side. Mets will go down in order as well. Five innings are in the books here at uh, City Field in New York. 1 0 Braves. <laughs> All right, as uh, thank you, Aiden, you did it. As a reminder for my GMs, when you are the batter, it is uh, now up to you to tell me if you're staying with your guy and to tell me a bit of the story of what's going on in your bullpen. So you're not having to put a player in a bullpen, but it is important for you to still tell me that for the immersion. Freddie Freeman, the responsible one for his third inning home run opposite field, his second of the season. Two-two pitch. Another well-struck shot, but this one definitely into the win. Downtown Billy Anderson almost straight up in center makes the catch for the out. 19 miles an hour. Wind is blowing in hard and keeping it hard to do anything. Yeah, the wind is killer. Feel like a lot of balls have been tagged. One out, Antonio Alvarez is one for two today. One run on three hits for the Braves here through five and a third. 2-0 pitch. That one's down the line, hard shot, diving stop. David Dolly makes a diving catch and he almost put hit himself head first into the wall. He actually did hit the wall. They're going to examine his right shoulder. It looks like he's going to be all right, but damn, was that a play down the line. That is EMLB sexy play of the day. David Dahl says, yeah, I might have a family, but I've got to keep him uh, feed, you know, hungry and fed. Dang, what a play as he almost goes head first into the wall there in the corner. <coughs> Two outs now. He might have a little bit of pain in the shoulder. We'll keep an eye on him there, but he stays in. Two outs now. Austin Riley is your batter. He's 0 for 1. Uh, help if I'm on the right screen, too. There we go. 0 1 pitch. Another hard shot to deep left center field. Anderson sizing it up, comes in from the warning track, makes the catch a couple steps in wind. Huge factor in this game. You've got to think several home runs were possibly stolen in this game with what's come off the bat. He hates City Field. I wonder if you also hate City Field, C-I-T-I -I Field, but it's okay to also hate City Field, which is one of the minor league ballparks in MLB The Show. Nonetheless, five and a half in the books, one nothing Braves. Y'all angry. He's like bearded dragon angry at this point. You know, we make fun of Perseus and that because Perseus, our, our bearded dragon, always looks like that. He's like, like I'm so mad, I'm angry. Pfft. 
Bottom of the six, Joe Paulino. Number nine hitter coming in. I'm trying not to sneeze now. <laughs> he said city on purpose. Do disrespect it. He wants you to disrespect it. So anyway, Joe Paulino, 0 for 1. <coughs> If you are gonna yell, at least spell correctly. <laughs> Three two pitch to Paulino. Just misses outside ball four to lead off walk. Oh my goodness, itch. <laughs> so funny. That uh that fastball did not miss by much. He was sizing him up there for a few pitches. Oh dear lord. Feel like I had a cat coming. <laughs> You know, rub themselves up and down in their face, you know, in my face or something. Jeez. Yes, you know exactly what I do now during my breaks. Come here, kitty. <laughs> so I'm playing with my nose, you know, for the second half of the show. Paulino's aboard at first, top of the order. Freddy Zamora, your batter now, 0 for 2. Thomas. The pitch, Zamora squares, pulls back, has a fastball missing outside, ball one. Corners coming in for the anticipation of a bunt. The 1 0. There's taken all the way with an off speed pitch, breaking ball, one ball, one strike. One, one. Zamora squares the bunt. It is grounded back towards the mound. Light side. Thomas has it. Plays to first. Sack bunt will do the job as Paulino will get to second. Good work from Sir Freddy Zamora there. Almost said Sergio Zamora. Whoops. Wrong player. One out now. Joe Paulino at second. Downtown Billy Anderson to the plate. 0 for 2. First pitch is missing low, ball one. See action in the bullpen for the Braves. Bryce Miller is the first one starting to loosen up out there. Miller, the right-hander. one -o delivery, catching the outer half. Nice pitch from Thomas, one ball, one strike. Hi, Jason. You are welcome for the drop. Thank you for saying hello. And you, of course, welcome for streaming. I will be streaming seven straight days as part of EMLB's Thank You Tour for meeting our $10,000 goal for raining, uh, raising funds for Dana-Farber. So make a note if you want to get some more drops for your perfect team. One ball, one strike pitch. Quick snap throw back to second, but he is going to get back in time. Albie scooted over quickly. That one was fairly close. 1-1 <clears throat> one, one pitch. Missing low and away. Two balls, one strike. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. $11,361.09 have been raised. Originally shot for a $10,000 goal. We got our goal. Keeping it open as part of this thank you tour. We are fine with wherever we land here at this point because we got to our primary goal. But yeah, we put the number a little higher now. See what we can do. Miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? Two balls, one strike. Swing and fouls that one off. You got a good piece. Rifles it foul. Good, the screens are up. Two balls, two strikes. Hi, Charles. Two balls, two strikes to downtown Billy Anderson, one of our community-created players, created by Denbrew. And again, community-created players are the big staple of the EMLB universe. Let us tell your story down the road. 2-2 two -two to Anderson. Swing and a miss, fooled by the curveball, and he goes down. I cannot hit curveball. Straight ball, I hit it very much. Curveball. 
That's our afraid. That's our afraid indeed. In this case, Anderson going down to the breaker. Six strikeouts on the day now for Connor Thomas. And we've got two outs here, bottom of the sixth. Seeing the lefty Ramon, L L L uh, Ramon Lanares also joining Bryce Miller, the right-hander. We've got two outs now. Paulino at first. Pete Alonzo is your batter. Mid-game boost, right? <laughs> Aw. Hold on. Wifey sent me something pretty. A boost for Charles. Don't know if you saw yesterday in yesterday's stream, Charles, but uh, Hamilton Porter went deep for his first on the year. The great Hambino. All right. Got my message to my wife. We're good. Bacon? Bacon? Oh, yes, I get it. Because don't forget, the Braves have reliever Troy Bacon as well, too. Ball one from Thomas to the polar bear. Seeing activity in the bullpen for the Mets as well. We got Brad Roney and Jason Foley, a couple right-handers starting to loosen up out there. The 1-0. That is missing low, trying to stay away from the power of the polar bear. It's two balls, no strikes. The 2-0. Fastball. Take it for a strike. Two balls and one strike. Too impatient for the mega, huh? <laughs> the 2-1. Going the opposite field. Down the line. Hooking, but foul. Oh, dear Lord. The pull uh, going against the shift could have been huge for the polar bear. Just foul rumbles around in the very small part of real estate out there. Alonzo almost getting some serious damage while keeping it in the park. Two balls, two strikes to Thomas, uh, from Thomas to Alonzo. El Gorgo. Gorgo decides to boost. Only downside of boosting as soon as you did, Gorgo, is that you'll got two balls of yarn now to spend. You'll barely be able to do anything until you get more balls of yarn. So uh, the suggested advice is to give yourself a little bit of a buffer. You know, like maybe get an extra hundred balls of yarn or so. All right, you know that, but it's hard coming up from there. The 2-2. Just gets a piece of the curveball. Think he was thinking fastball. He was late, but he just barely gets a piece and stays alive. He's a BG. He's going to put it all on heist. He's going big. says NJ's a returning jet. Welcome back, NJ. NJ, did you, I think you joined our chat, right? You're Nick. I sent a message out to everybody in the Discord today. So if, if you're the person that I think you are and you have sent me a player, I said an apology that I'm uh, grateful for all the success we had with the Streamathon. But I apologize to any of you who have sent anything like yourself, sending me probably your created player. Um, I have not looked at it, and I won't look at it yet just because I'm afraid I will forget it. So I will be getting to it. I have to finish what's called 
uh, re-rates first. Austin Riley was someone who was re-rated today per my, our league rules. So we got like five more of those. And then we go fully back focus to doing the boosts, uh, uh, counting all the boosts, putting all players in and getting back up. So appreciate your patience. Awesome. Thank you. Two balls, two strikes. Alonzo lifted in the air got a lot of it but you know that wind is just a test for johnny burnitz to get under it he does and he will make the catch side is retired how many home runs do you think we would have had tonight if we didn't have a 19 mile an hour win because it just seems like the ball's jumping off the bat denver says seven we'll never know six innings in the books it's one nothing raves Best I can do, Chad, is have you go to the commission amount announcement section of my Discord and in the search section in that channel, write re-rate, R-E dash rate, and then in the search, go to the oldest message for re-rate and you'll see the rule. That's the best way I can have uh, explain it for you. It's trying to give players any MLB life still to their minor league counterparts. Bo Bichette's a perfect example. Bo was not as well rated so because he had success he got re-rated and improved so he's a little bit more what you expect Bo Bichette to be. Same for Fernando Tatis Steroid. Is it Junior or Steroid? I forget. Anyway, um, you get the idea. All right, Para is staying aboard as we will start the top of the seventh. And JR has never been a fan of the re-rate. He calls it Satan's Curse. Ozzy Albies will be your first batter. Aiden Pierce and Johnny Burnett are scheduled to follow as well. Albies tonight, 0 for 2. The 0-1 from Para. Center field coming in. Anderson. Uh-oh! Wind finally got somebody. Anderson thought he had it sized up, but I tell you, the wind is wrecking havoc, and unfortunately, it's going to be an EA. Go! Albies is aboard. Unfortunate. We knew that the wind was a challenge. We mentioned at the top of the show that the outfielders had been doing a lot of practice in warm-ups prior to factor in this outfield uh, this outfield win situation. Yes, in the commission announcement section. So just go there or use the search on Discord, have it be specifically to the commission announcements channel, then write re-rate, and then you'll get all the messages, but then go to the oldest message and you'll see the rule. All right, Albi is aboard by way of the unfortunate E8. Aiden Pearson, your batter with nobody out. He's one for two today. <coughs> First pitch to Pearson will catch the outer half. Strike one. Pearson, of course, drafted by the Tampa Rays, second round, 22nd pick, 52nd overall in 2023 out of Marshall in Huntington, West Virginia. The 0-1 pitch watches that one. No balls, two strikes now. Pearson, of course, traded from Tampa to Atlanta, along with Gavain Basilia, Eric Rivera, and the river god, Ashilis Dudley. That was in exchange for Len Daly, Alex AZ Axel Murray, and Alex Doc Luger, 1.0 legend, who is now a regular part of the rotation for the Rays. The 0-2 pitch. Slap down the right side, just foul. Just foul. By about two feet as Pearson slapped that one hard right side. P 
Pearson is rumored to be petitioning the league for a catcher skill challenge as part of the ASG festivities. And yes, Aiden Pearson's best friend, Ashley Studley, along in that deal. The 0 2. Staying away on him and misses outside with the changeup. One ball, two strikes. Power and Miller working on an away strategy against P uh, Pearson here. The one two pitch. Well struck into the air, center field. Going back is Anderson, still going back right to the warning track. He will make the catch. Oh, Aiden is going to be bummed on this, and it, he, here goes his I hate City Field rant. Huge out for Aiden, uh, Billy Anderson there to redeem. Aiden Pearson goes out a long way, one out. <laughs> there he goes. Because <laughs> it's his CCP especially. He wanted the homer. He told me in chat, he says, I want to see Pearson make him pay, so swing away. Something poetic about his CCP making an error and my CCP making him pay. It's like an episode of here's why I'm going to, you know, screw you. <laughs> That's the new show coming in the future. <laughs> All right. Yes, re-rate is for real players only. Yeah, he's injured. Uh, it's a sore knee. It just affects his running. That's why he's still in. That ball would have been the parking lot on any other night. Indeed. What about Freddie Freeman's? That was an opposite field home run. How far would that thing have gone? Triple third deck? Johnny Burnett's your batter. 0 for 2. First pitch to Burnett's is going to catch the inside letter high, strike one. Burnett's playing his third career Major League Baseball game. Drafted out of Staunton River College in the third round in 2022. So you're going to make Tatis have zero power, huh? I wonder if we should have a rule if a, if a player that was re-rated ever gets oh dear god if a player gets re-rated but gets peds and suspended they should it should negate the re-rate oh dear god steve would be like steve would use his jujitsu skills and and use them on me pretty liberally i would think <laughs> i'd be like i'm pretty proud of myself i like that rule <laughs> yeah like that <laughs> Oh, one pitch is inside ball one. You know, what would actually happen is, is that he would have his daughter, Yuna, make faces at me, and that would probably be even more painful. She'd probably be. I don't like you. <laughs> she does approve now of the picture used of her for her virtual player. Retroactively take away all home runs for the last three years. The one one. Slaps it hard to third. Good reaction play over there from Arcia. He will throw to second in uh, first in time to get the out. Albies will get down to second. That was all reflex from Arcia. Good play there to get Burnitz for the out. Two outs now. Ron Carney is your batter. Carney 0 for 2 today. 0 for 5 now in his career against the Franklin Parra. First pitch swings and slaps that foul right side as he was laid on it, but it's going to be clearly foul as that bounces past the third base coach. Oh, one pitch hit into center field. This one is going to get down for a base hit. Albies taking the corner. He will head home. We've got an RBI single from Ron Carney. It's a 2-0 ball game. 
Carney sends that one on a sizzling liner. Anderson playing back, had no chance to get down on it. It's going to be an RBI for Carney. His fourth RBI on the year. Two outs, top of the seven, two nothing Braves. Now, Jacques Landry is your batter. Landry, 0 for 2. Mets fans heavily booing right now. First pitch, that one is a changeup on the outer half, strike one. One pitch, quick test on Carney over there. He is back safely. Gorgo, this is uh, this particular song happens to be my favorite. Cutting raindrops from Harris. Carney, for all his speed, has yet to exercise it on the base pass in his career. Just one steal in 129 games played in his career. The 0-1 pitch. This is low. One ball, one strike. Ball, one strike, pitch, power to the set. Alonzo keeps Carney close. The pitch. Swings, fouls that off right side. Count will be one ball, two strikes here. Top of the seventh. Schmeier Hosky scheduled to start off the bottom of the seventh. Two strike count the pitch. Runners going, but it's in there. Called strike three. He watched it all the way, and he goes down by strikeout. <laughs> seventh inning is uh, top of the seventh is done. Ron Carney will get an RBI single to make it a 2 nothing game. Seventh inning stretch. I was born to love you. I was born to lick your face. I was born to rob you, but you were born to rob me first. Seventh inning stretch, Fluffy Kitty Ninja Show, the thank you tour edition of Fluffy Kitty Ninjas, where we're going to be streaming for the next seven straight days, one game of the night per day, as we have fun celebrating our success with helping strike out cancer in kids but also to celebrate our brand new EMLB opening season. 2026 season underway. The opening day tour continues. Bottom of the seventh, Connor Thomas is still in activity, still on the uh, in the bullpen. 75 pitches for Thomas to this point. Shamar Hosky has had a good night against him. Two for two to this point. First pitch to Thomas uh, because I still have the pitch by pitch on. My apologies. It'll stay 1 0, though. He will lift it into center field, coming in and not going to be able to get it. Hosky, three for three tonight. Johnny Burnett tried to come in, but not a lot of sizzle on that ball. Gets down. Four hits for the Mets. Shamar Hosky has three of them, though. Going to do a mound visit here. 77 pitches for Thomas to this point. To be honest, I feel just fine. I feel just fine. How are you? Going to pitch to the batter. Meanwhile, in the Mets bullpen, we see Carter Shepard starting to ramp it up. <coughs> 
Jackson Miller is your batter. He is 0 for 2 tonight. First pitch coming at the, ooh, at the letters. That'll be a called strike. <coughs> oh, one pitch. It is missing low one away, one on one. Just once. I'd like to see the pitcher say, I'm dying out here, Skip. The 1-1. One, one. Swings, bounces that one back. Left side, it's one ball, two strikes. The 1-2. Wow! Call strike three, eight, and Pearson steals a strikeout apparently on that one. Look at where that one was, low and away. Called strike three, seven strikeouts on the day, and Aiden Pearson influenced Godzilla mode for Connor Thomas. Seven strikeouts on the day, Connor Thomas officially in Godzilla mode. One out now. Hosky still the bat runner at first. Brandon Nimmo to the date the plate. He is one for two. <coughs> oh, time, time! Here comes, here comes the manager. Ramon Linares, the left-hander, is going to come in and relieve Thomas after six and a third. Great day for Thomas. He will leave with a runner at first. He cannot lose this game. Ramon Linares will come in. Remember, three batter rule here in EMLB or get out of the inning. One of the two. Linares, the 24-year-old from the Dominican Republic. Two-thirds of an inning so far this year. He has nothing else to show for it except that. Second year in the majors for the left-hander. He had 10 innings of work last season. Signed as an international free agent with the Braves back in 2019. The lefty throws upper 90s, touches 100 regularly with the fastball. Also works a good slider and forkball into the combination. <coughs> Lenara is aboard, ready to take on Nimmo. It's an O, uh, oh, uh, he's 0 for 1 in his career against the boss battle. I love jumping in on the boss battles at least. I'll never do free for alls, but I will do boss battles to join you guys to try to see if we can get fluffy. First pitch from Linares. Whoa, look out. That one's going to get Nimmo. That one's going to hurt. 99 miles an hour. Never feels good. Nimmo doesn't look happy about it, but he will get to first. Doesn't think there's any intent in that play. All right, David Dahl is now the batter. Dahl with two on, one out. 0 for two today, 0 for one against Linares. <coughs> First pitch, that one will be in there, strike one. Throat is really uncomfortable right now. Yeah, funny. Oh, one swings and fouls that one off as a dribbler down the right side. 101 on the gun there. That is straight smoke. Yeah, woo -hoo 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 -hoo. <clears throat> the O2 pitch to Doll. 
called strike three. Just watches it completely and he will go down. Fatality. First strikeout on the day for Ramon Linares. Another nasty pitch on the outer half. Beautiful collection on the black. Dahl goes down. Two outs now. Orlando Arcia is your batter. Arcia tonight 0 for 2. <coughs> First pitch. Line shot right back up the middle. A base hit. Hosky is not a fast runner. He's going to stop at third. That ball was hit too hard, and every run outfielder here has a cannon. Hosky's one speed definitely affected the Mets there. Bases loaded. Joe Paulino comes to the dish. He's 0 for 1. He's also 0 for 1 in his se this season in bases loaded. Mets now with five hits on the day. First pitch. Outer half. Hundred on the gun. Strike one. That's all you heard from that ball. Fly by. Mount visit. Coming. Going to talk strategy over here. I'm still feeling good. The 0-1. It's lifted into right field. This is going to get down for a hit. One run will score. Two runs will score. It's a two-run single for Joseph Paulino. It's tied at two. <coughs> it's what a duck snort would be. Whatever a duck snort is. But it will do the job as Joe Paulino gets the base hit. Here comes the manager. That's it for Ramon Linares. Bryce Miller, who's been working up and down in the in the uh, in the bullpen, is on his way. Miller, the 27-year-old from New Braunfels, Texas, will enter in second appearance on the year for him. He has uh, walked two guys and given up a hit. Has not gotten anyone out yet this season, but also no one has scored yet. For Miller, it's his uh, second season in the majors. He was with both Milwaukee and Atlanta last year. Former 38th round draft pick back in 2018 by the Miami Marlins out of Blinn College. Correction, sorry, he didn't sign then. He did sign in 2020 with the Arizona Diamondbacks in the second round. Quite a difference between the 38th round and the second round, you know? Miller sports the fastball in the mid-90s and the slider in the mid-90s as well. All right, so Miller's ready. It's going to bring a pinch hitter in as well. We're going to have Ransel Villeman coming in righty on lefty. Villeman comes in to counter the move from the Braves. Villeman, the 24-year-old from the Dominican, 0 for 4 so far this season. It's his second season in the majors. He had 96 at bats last year. He was hit a 219 average with five homers, 12 RBI. New pitcher against new batter. Two outs, bottom of the seventh. Tied at two now. First pitch is going to be outside. Ball one. Uh, no. Never mind. It looked outside ball one, but apparently it got called a strike. Aiden Pearson slipping another 20 bucks to the ump. What? We're kidding. The old one. Uh, 
that one's low. I'm just going to wait until I see for sure because, you know, we're getting some weird calls now. One ball, one strike. The pitch. That's on the outer corner in there. Strike two. That one uh, might still be here outside, but he gets the benefit of the down. One ball, two strikes. The one, two from Miller. That one's low with the slider. Two balls and two strikes. Orlando Arcia is your go-ahead run at second. Joe Paulino is at first. The 2-2. Two -two. Swings and gets jammed. Fouls that one back to the screen. He'll stay alive. Two balls and two strikes. The 2-2. Two -two. One more time. Swing and a miss. Slider that stayed outside. It does the job. That will retire the side, but not before... We get Joseph Paulino to get a two-run single into right field. Seven innings in the books. It's now Mets two, Braves two. All right, uh, you already said Villamit to second. And uh, Carter Shepard. Confirming you still want Carter Shepard to come in. All right, Carter Shepard is going to come in to replace Franklin Parra. Had one earned run allowed uh, today. He cannot win this game, but he will get the no decision. Good day for Parra. Carter Shepard will make his 2026 debut. 28 innings of work for him last year. He was 1-1 one one with a 7.07 ERA and 28 innings of work. Did give up 9 home runs, but struck out 45. In 28 innings of work, he throws a fastball that will touch 100 regularly. Also has a curveball and a changeup. He comes in. We'll start with the top of the order here in the 8th. Verdugo, Freeman, and Alvarez. Verdugo is 0-3 for 3 tonight. The one, two, pitch. Well struck into center field. Anderson going back to the wall. This one is gone. Alex Verdugo takes a one, two pitch and he goes absolutely bonkers on it. Moonshot into the 19 mile an hour wind. 435 feet later, Braves get the lead back. It's 3-2. to two. First home run on the year and as a member of the Braves for Verdugo. <laughs> Verdugo said, Daffy, the wind. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Freddie Freeman had a home run to opposite field. Two home runs in this game. In case you are joining us and did not know, we have... <coughs> We have coughing. No, we have a challenge. One dollar for every home run hit by the entire league in today's action. Just one day. We think there was at least 19 home runs when we checked on the out-of-town scoreboard earlier. Nice try, Pirate. Troy Bacon starting to warm up in the Braves' pen. Gabriel Rodriguez, the left-hander, also joining him. First pitch to Freeman slapped against the shift and that gets by for a hit. Arcia just beyond his reach as he was more as a shortstop there. And Freeman has his second hit on the day. Two quick hits. Antonio Alvarez will be the batter. Alvarez tonight, one for three. First pitch is going to be a fastball in there. Strike one. Oh, 
Hold on a sec. We have a call for a pinch runner. Freeman doesn't want to come out. He does his Roger Dorn. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Freeman coming out. Christian Cairo is being called as a pinch runner here over at first. Cairo in as a pinch runner. The O one note Shepard wants to check on the pinch runner who gets back in there. Okay, Cairo, the 24 year old from Clearwater, Florida, has some respectable speed out there. Third year in the majors for him. He's been with the Dodgers as well as the Royals. Cairo, six career stolen bases in 10 attempts. The 0-1 looks like a pitch out, but nothing doing as the mind games begin. One, one pitch, no nope. quick snap throw. Cairo gets back okay. The one one pitch there's a fastball outside Ugh, we've seen pitches further out get called strikes and these get called balls Say what? two balls one strike the pitch from Shepard Alvarez watches it right down the middle two balls two strikes Two two pitch coming up. Two two runners going. Swung on and missed. He will strike him out, and Jackson Miller will throw him out. It's a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Cairo on the run. Alvarez swung and missed. Shepard gets his first strikeout on the day. Miller gets his first player down on the day. Two outs now, top of the eighth. That'll put Austin Riley in the box. Riley tonight is 0 for 2. Two one pitch. In the air left field. Win. Definitely holding that one up. David Dahl in regular left field. Makes the catch. And that will retire the side. Alex Verdugo is now the difference in this game. Big home run deep to center into the wind. Bottom of the eighth, we will now go. It's three to Atlanta. Going to have a new pitcher coming up here. Uh, just need a clarification on who's playing first base now. Cairo came in as a pinch runner for Freeman. Just looking for confirmation on who's where now. Riley will move to first. Austin Riley, the first base. Jacques Landry will go to his traditional third. Christian Cairo stays in the game and is now your shortstop. So there's your defensive alignment changes. Meanwhile, Troy Bacon coming in here for the bottom of the eighth. Again, defensive alignment changes. Jack Landry stays in the game, moves from short to third. Austin Riley moves from third over to first base. Christian Cairo came in as a pinch runner for Freddie Freeman, stays in and is at short. On the hill, 29-year-old from Tampa, Florida, Troy Bacon. Bacon, two and two-thirds innings so far this year. Two hits, no earned runs. He's walked one and struck out three. It is his fourth season in the majors. He had 13 saves and a 2.89 ERA last year for the Braves. Fourth round selection by the Braves in 2017 out of Santa Fe Community College in Gainesville, Florida. 
Bacon throws the fastball in the upper uh, mid 90s. Slider change up and a circle change as well. He's got Billy Anderson, Pete Alonzo, and Shamar Hosky coming up here in this inning. Again, Bacon's been dealing with a little bit of an abdominal muscle issue, but he has been pitching through it. Hold on one sec. I could use him, yeah. Thank you, babe. I'm almost done. Bottom of the eighth now. <clears throat> Got me some Halls Breezers. Now the show is being brought to you, sponsored by Halls Breezers. All right, Billy Anderson comes in 0 for 3 today. 2 for 5 with a home run in his career against Bacon. He really likes Bacon. What do you say to that, Denver? Does he really like Bacon? They're playing the uh, no doubles defense is on, guarding the lines. Outfield is deep. 3-2 pitch to Anderson. Shot over to second. Albies has it. Over to first in time. One out. <clears throat> Do it again. You got it. Pete Alonzo will be your batter. Alonzo tonight. 0 for 3. Smaller sample against Bacon. 0 for 2. One, one tries to go the other way with it but Ron Carney wonderful range of Carney right in his domain he will pull it in for the second out two outs now Shamar Hoskies had a day he's three for three today two for four in his time against Troy Bacon Mets have a guy warming up in the bullpen. It's Jairo Laborde. Two-one pitch from Bacon. Pops it up. Right side. This one's drifting into foul territory. Austin Riley's now over there. He will pull it in and make the catch. And the Mets will go down quietly here in the bottom of the eighth. To the ninth, we will go. Graves hanging on to a 3-2 lead. It's the EMLB Game of the Night, part of the Thank You Tour. <clears throat> Top of the ninth, we will go, and the Mets will summon Jira Laborde, the left-hander, 32-year-old from the Dominican. <coughs> Laborde has one inning of work so far this year. Two strikeouts to his credit. Former Tiger as well as Cleveland Indian coming in. Sixth season in the majors now for Laborde. He had a 2.62 ERA with the Indians last season. Corbin Klaus is starting to warm up in the Braves' pen to start off this top of the ninth. Ozzy Albies is ready to go 0 for 3 today for Albies. First pitch from Laborge. Outside with a fastball. I don't have pitch by pitch on. What's up with that? Okay. Why'd that happen? All right. The 1 out. Grounded is short. Paulino has it. <coughs> Excuse me. He'll throw to first for the out. I'm all like confused on why we had the uh, pitch by pitch. I'm looking. It doesn't say pitch by pitch was on. I know you can't see it through the overlay. Maybe you can. Hold on. Oh, you can see when I turn it on just barely. All right, Aiden Pearson is your batter. Pearson's tagged the ball pretty good. Just got a one for three day to show for it, though. The one-two pitch. Shift is on. To center field. Right at Billy Anderson. 
One CCP hits out to another, two outs. <laughs> Pearson should get player of the game for all the st strikes he stole tonight. Two outs now for Labort. Johnny Burnett to the box, 0 for 3. Uh, what's going on? So confused on what was going on there. Okay. CCP pitchers to the show. That was an early message earlier today. I don't know why that's still in my uh, message. That was from Sharpie very early. All right, Burnett's 0 for 3 today. He does have an 0 for 1 experience against Burnett in his nine career at bats so far. 3 2 pitch. Runners going. No, there is no runner. Slapped over to third. That gets by the diving Orlando Arcia. That's in for a hit. I got to focus here. Burnett gets aboard with his hit. It's his second career hit now in the majors. He's aboard at first. Two outs. Ron Carney is the batter. One for three today for Carney with an RBI. What's in those Hall's Breezers? I know, right? First pitch in there. Strike one. Maybe it's the rum. Maybe it's the ones with alcohol in it. The rum Hall's Breezers. The board checks Burnett's over at first. Should we be concerned if Kamish is seeing invisible runners? No, because I will always say that I'm tripping over an invisible gopher, so I mean, there's that. The old one. That one is up and away, one ball, one strike. Oh my god, itchy nose of doom again. Maybe there's an invisible cat right here rubbing up against my face, and I can't tell. The one one. That one is a strike called strike. Uh, yeah, that's at the knees. That's a pretty good pitch. One ball, two strikes here to Carney. If you're looking ahead, bottom of the ninth is Jackson Miller, followed by Brandon Nimmo and David Dahl. Three lefties are coming up here for the Mets. As long as they don't have tortilla nightmares. Well, for all I know, I am. The one two pitch to left field. Pretty well struck. This one is hooking. Hooking and hooking foul, apparently. Dahl hiding in the corner. We couldn't see him. Yeah, I think that has something to do with it. Definitely has to have something to do with it. Carney goes a long way, but it hooks into foul territory, although Dahl was trying to be in the neighborhood to make a play on that one. Fear the tortilla. Yes. A one two pitch to left field again coming in still coming in doll but his will not get it and it's gonna bounce in foul territory and into the seats carney trying to go the other way with these pitches all right challenge foul ball But one, two, one more time. Swings and fouls that one back. Count remains one and two. Good battle here between Labor and Ron Carney. Carney's nickname could be the Freak. He doesn't have a nickname at all. Carney is one of the few, the rare players. He's not from the 1.0 universe. He's not a community creative player. He's not a real-life player. He's a EMLB on the show player. He was a fictional player created by MLB The Show. And for those who don't know it, uh, going back to, what was it, MLB 18? From MLB 18, I was doing a continuous saves universe when you could carry it over to future MLBs. 
Carney was what you see him. Speed, defense, power, but more often than not, couldn't hit the ball. It was, you know, kind of home run or strikeout kind of guy. But I loved him. And he just seemed like he'd be a great story, so I'm grateful he's made the majors. So an EMLB on the show player is like a 1.0-er, sort of. Well, we got to call him a, I don't know, 1.8, 1.9. But you get the idea. They are eligible for off-season training and all of that. The 1-2 to Carney. Grounded to second. Towards uh, Ranzel Villeman. He will throw to first. Beats the speedy Carney in time. Side is retired. Braves will leave a runner aboard, and that is it. We will go to the bottom of the ninth. Looks like Corbin Klaus is on his way. We'll see if he can get the save. It's 3-2. to two. So the thing that frustrates me the most about talking about Carney is what could have been if MLB the show wouldn't have been such a-holes about ah, no more progressive saves. Nobody does it. Ramon is a four-letter word. That's just me. Anyway. All right. Bottom of the ninth. Corbin Klaus coming in to relieve Troy Bacon. Fifth pitcher on the night for the Braves. The left-handed Klaus, 30 years old from Grand Ledge, Michigan, comes in. He's got one appearance, one inning of work, one save to his credit already. Last season, Klaus was 5-2 and two with seven saves, 2.34 ERA. It's his eighth season in the majors. Klaus, 30-year-old left-hander, mid-90s fastball, throws the good curveball and a pretty awesome changeup. He's got three different pitches he could throw for outs. I just didn't want to pay the one de developer who knew how to do it. Well, you know, think about where EMLB would not be if not for out-of-the-parks continual dedication to imported saves. If they ever stop that, it will seriously affect. Now, that's my worry about Perfect Team. There's more focus on that. I know where the money gets made. But this is still the bread and butter. What we're doing is what I think this part of Out of the Park could be. If they ever stop doing that, then it, it means that there's a shelf life to everything. So as long as Out of the Park is still functional and still providing new games and still focuses on franchise at this level that they do here, we'll be able to offer you what you see in the EMLB universe. But unfortunately, we're a one-trick pony. If they ever stop doing that. That's me out the door. Anyway. Klaus is ready to go. Jackson Miller will be the first to face him. Brandon Nimmo, David Dahl scheduled up. Three lefties coming up. Miller ready to go. 0 for 3 today. He's 0 for 2 against Klaus in his time. Slight shift to the right against Miller. Klaus. First pitch. Slaps it into left field. Look out. Here comes Verdugo. Diving catch. What a catch. Andrew Benintendi-like. Gorgeous play from Alex Verdugo. That is absolutely sexy. Great play from Alex Verdugo. He did it with the bat. He did it with the glove. He's like, you ain't taking away my game-winning hit. Not at all. One out. I think Jackson Miller. Didn't Miller? No. No, Miller had a decent shot to center field, but it was one of those that didn't uh, make it out, of course. Great play, though, but one out. Nimmo. One for two. Got a bit of history against 
Klaus. We don't see David Dahl in the on-deck circle. We're thinking he is being lifted. We don't have a batter yet. Oh, wait. Actually, we see Willens Astadio start to grab a, a helmet and a bat. The three, Joe Nemo. Swing and a miss. Got him with the off-speed pitch called strike three. Emotional damage. Uh, let's see. Not to be mean to Dish or anyone, but PT wasn't as good as last season. A lot of the improvements that 23 made for franchise mode mean it's pretty sure to keep for the future. I keep my fingers crossed. Alrighty. David Dahl, your day is done, sir. We're going with a right-hander or a switch hitter in this instance. Will Wilfred asked the Dio. I said Williams. We would be honored if you would join. But it's Wilfred asked the Dio coming in. Titus Groen, thank you very much for hitting the follow button. Welcome to Fluffy Getting Engines. <coughs> ask the Dio, the 26-year-old. Damn, the COVID cough is really affecting me right now. Give me one moment. All right, there we go. Wilfred asked the deal is going to come in with nobody on the 26-year-old Venezuelan. It's his first at bat of the year. Now five years in the majors form. Had four homers last year while hitting 261, 27 RBI, and 218 at bats. <clears throat> Klaus against Astadio, small sample, one for two in their career. The one, two pitch. Swing and a miss, they got him. And this game is over. Great game here at City Field between the Braves and the Mets. A big time effect from all the wind that was out there. So we come back to look at the box scores in this one. Seven hits for the Braves. Mets had six. Let's look at how each side went. Verdugo, again, one for four. He had the big home run, 435-foot shot off of Carter Shepard in the eighth inning. That was his first home run as a member of the Braves for the three-time batting champion. Freddie Freeman went opposite field in the third inning off of Franklin Parra to get his second home run of the year. So two home runs hit in this particular game, both by Freeman and Verdugo. Uh, everyone else had just singles. Excuse me, Antonio Alvarez and Aiden Pearson both had doubles. My apologies. Ron Carney had an RBI single in this game uh, as well. Uh, let's do this. Once we get done this game, we'll go look at total home runs. Then we'll look at everything else before we get ready to call it a night. <coughs> Damn, excuse me. All right. Um, for the Mets, six hits on today. Half of them went to Shamar from Shamar Hosky. He was three for four today. He had a double in the fourth inning off of Connor Thomas. He did score a run as well. Uh, Brandon Nimmo with a hit. Orlando Arceo had a hit. And Joe Paulino, the biggest hit in the seventh inning as he had a two-run single, scoring two runs when the bases were loaded. Uh, he did also walk as well one time. For pitching, Connor Thomas, both starters did not factor in the decisions, but they both were pretty solid in this one. Connor Thomas, six and a third, four hits, one earned run. He walked one and struck out seven. Ramon Linares gave up two hits. He did allow a run to score, which gives him the blow save. Bryce Miller faces one batter, six pitches, gets the strikeout. Hey, that's good enough for a win. Right place, right time. Troy Bacon earns the hold. Corbin Klaus gets the two strikeouts and the perfect one inning for his second save of the year. 
Franklin Parra goes seven innings. He gave up four hits, two runs. One was unearned. Of course, the error from downtown Billy Anderson. Again, wind was a factor in this game, and that is absolutely what affected him in that situation. Uh, he walked, uh, Parra walked one, struck out four, 94 pitches on the day. He will get the no decision. Carter Shepard gave up the home run to Verdugo to start off his night. Gives up two hits, one earned run. He did strike out one over that one inning. Jaira Laborte, just one hit allowed, but no one scored. Player of the game. I think it's going to go to Connor Thomas. Game score tells me to go to Connor Thomas. Para could have almost gotten it as well. Yep, Connor Thomas. I'd give it to Verdugo in the end, especially with the diving stop that he made. Just me, though. <clears throat> so, again, thank you to. Aiden, as well as Denbrew. $350,000 will go to the Braves for their appearance in tonight's game and getting the win. Mets will get $150,000 added to their team. Let's look at how the league fared real quick. Reds beating the Phillies 7-3. Count the home runs, please, if you would. 7-3 for the Reds. Alan Brokale gets his first home run. I'm trying to keep track. All right, so three home runs after that one. Reds win seven to three. Brewers will win an extra inning six to five. We had two, three, four, five home runs in that one. Nationals will defeat the Marlins. Oh, dang it. I don't know what happened there. Uh, Rays, oh, wait a minute, dang it. All right, I got to start over because this dang thing. Someone else keep track of the home runs then. All right, we're going to start over. Twins defeat the Royals 4-3. to three. Home runs from Jose Ramirez, Jeff Piazza, and Trevor Larnick. Uh, the Angels uh, defeat the Athletics 2-0. Both were solo shots, Josh Jump. Gets his first of the year. Mike Trout, his third on the season. Surely Sean Clisby looked pretty good in his first appearance. He doesn't give up any runs. And he gets the W. Rays will win against the Jays 6-4. Hamilton Porter, the great Hambino, goes deep for the second time. Drew Mendoza, his first home run as a Ray. And Tyler Stevenson as well. Hold on. Turn this down a bit. <coughs> Fishman good. Jose Merriman gets his first home run as a member of the Jays. Dalen Lyle also with his first as well. Pirates will sweep the Red Sox 6-4. They got started going big later. Whip Sentner getting the win in that one. Andrew James, community credit player from yours truly, gets his first save as a member of the Pirates. Brian Reynolds, Hesop Choi, Uki Betts, Danny Diaz, some punk gets a home run. That's five there. Uh, Tigers beat the White Sox 3-2. to two. David Leal, the phenom, is still doing it. Gets a win on that one. Miguel Geraldo gets a home run for the White Sox. Astros beat the Mariners 6-4. to four. Uh, Grayson Rowan, Gavin Lux with home runs for the winners. Javi Baez, as well as the Eradicator, Eric Kelly, his second home run. That's got to be a good sign for Mariners, as he has two home runs to this point. Uh, the Reds beat the Phillies 7-3. Correa, Lamb, Brokale with homers. We checked the Brewers and the Rockies winning in extras. Again, there were five home runs there. Nationals beat the Marlins 4-1. Three home runs in that game. Josh Kath with his second. Hunter Bishop and Juan Soto with their first. The game you just watched. The Braves win against the Mets. 3-2 to two in a very windy one out there. Alex Verdugo with a home run. It's the game winner. Freddie Freeman got his second earlier in the game. If you would join us. Lord Christick, thank you for hitting the follow. Welcome to Fluffy Kitty Ninja. 
fluffy kitty ninjas. Plural. Diamondbacks will win three to one as they will avoid the four game sweep against the Giants. Uh, that is uh, which Rogers? That's Taylor Rogers getting the win in that one. Joey Gallo gets his first back with the Diamondbacks. Bo Bichette got his second. So there's two home runs here. One for uh, San Fran, one for Arizona. And the Padres will defeat the Dodgers 7-4. Yaisel Sierra gets the victory in that one. He had a home run from Louis Ramirez for the Padres. Yes, I know, my big old hit. Mayron Catalina had two home runs. Juan Corcoran with his first home run. And Rod Metzler, his first. So in that game, that's five in that one. 40 home runs. Nice round numbers. So anybody who joined the home run challenge... One dollar per forty dollars. Sincerely appreciated that you further add to our already crushed quest. As we wanted ten thousand, of course you see twelve five there. Hey, it's not that they were greedy. We're just trying to see how high we can go. We're still aspire because you know cancer doesn't quit at ten thousand dollars. So let me. Not, not even every team played, too. And imagine how many if we didn't have the win. There's a lot of truth to that. All right, so I haven't even advanced the day, so let's check that. Let's advance the day. Discord should be lighting up. Yep, Discord should be filling up with the scores from this game. Fighting kitties, love them, uh, those donations. 40 further dollars added in. We are now over $11,400. Again, we consider anything gravy or whipped cream, depending upon what time of day it is and if you're having dinner or dessert. Let's check the injuries now. Aiden gets the boost. So let's see the injuries. So Tim Anderson, we officially know his injuries diagnosed with a strained back muscle. That's going to affect him for two weeks. We know about uh, John Duplantier yesterday having oblique strain missing two to three weeks. Cameron Misner for the Rockies sprained his knee. Could probably play through it. We don't know how bad it is, but he's not expected to go on the IR <sighs> at this point. Signings, because we're still looking to see if a couple of major names consider signing at all. Well, um, name, name to a number year contract extension just took place. I assume that's a coach. Meanwhile, the Marlins go a one year extension with Sandy Alcantara. That's an extension. Bryson Stott signed a two year extension with the Giants. Which is all, I believe, perfectly legit. Yep, it is. Won't start till next year, too. So they'll have them signed through 2028. All right, so here's your standings early on to start the season. Again, only uh, three or four games have been uh, announced so far to this or played to this point. Still very early in the season. And again, we are part of our thank you tour and our opening week coverage. We have one game at a time, one day at a time we're doing until next Sunday. So one down, six to go. We'll get this file out here in a moment. 
uh, I, all redemptions will be seen. Absolutely, I assure you that. Tomorrow's game, Ryan Shaw. He's a community-created player. He is looking like the eventual starter here for the Mariners as they will take on the Angels out west. Brian Perez is scheduled to take the ball and face off against the Mariner Mafia. Could be a good one. Meanwhile, we'll be watching in Kansas City as Corbin Coe, crazy coach himself, is going to be getting his first start wearing Kansas City Royal Blue. That is his hometown team after all. So he's really going to enjoy starting to watch that much more. All right, gang, it is it for us. Speaking of the coach, I think we'll go rate him. He's getting ready to do, I think he's doing Madden. Is he doing Madden? Yep, he's doing Madden. So we'll go right over to the coach. Hopefully you'll join us and we'll go say hi to him. Thank him as well for his energy. And you can thank him especially if you love seeing me get slapped upside the head by my family. My ear was ringing for 10 minutes. Thanks for that. But if you enjoyed seeing the the family slap me around then you probably really enjoyed coach's wife slapping him around too he's the one who came up with it my wife says oh we're doing that back to litter box i'm going club kitty ninjas do assassinate and you're looking at their victim so next time i can find some glue and tape i will put my head back on straight and we will be back in front of you that will be tomorrow night same cat time same cat channel seven o'clock angels Mariners will be your battle for day two of our thank you tour. So again, thank you very much for helping us work towards striking out cancer in kids. This will stay open for the remainder of the week in case you wish to do any further donations. Save that link, even $5. We greatly appreciate it. Remember, how you think directs your life. When you think you're best, you're going to be your best. So please, go and do your best and have a great rest of your night. We'll see you soon. Peace. Jackass!